Christians just kind of put a vote down <laughs> and uh, don't know who they're voting for or why or who these people are. Let's, let's go over this a little bit. So the first one has to do with what's Superior Court Office number 11 if you're in LA County. Now, a lot of political groups are pouring hundreds of thousands of dollars into these races. Lots of money. And they're a stepping stone to a higher position. Now, we do a rating. We're the only one that does a rating. In fact, you know, we, we do these ratings for these candidates from Northern California down to San Diego. So we cover all the different areas. And uh, we're the only ones who do to evaluate the judges. And um, Deborah, uh, she is 58 from La Canada. She's a Democrat and she has a uh, rating of 4% for judicial index. And what that means, if you have a low number, you're a judicial activist. You believe more in uh, liberal legislating from the bench. So if you like somebody who's a judicial activist, more legislating from the bench, you'd want to go for her because her opponent is Steve Schreiner. And Steve, uh, well, Deborah's a violent crime prosecutor. Steve is a gang murder prosecutor. He's 58, 28 years veteran of the Department of District Attorney. He has a 96% conviction rate, which I thought was pretty astounding. Uh, he has the endorsement of the Torrance Police Officers Association, conservative groups, and Steve Cooley. Cooley. He has a a judicial index average of 8%, where he's more of a strict constructionist, more of a conservative judge. The next one is Office 42, and Matthew Achieves, child molestation prosecutor, Whittier School Board, um, and uh, part of the uh, County Department and District Attorney's Office. Uh, Matthew has a lot of the endorsements of the AFL-CIO, liberal groups, and Democrats. Uh, he has a, a judicial activist rating of four. Now, Alicia Molino is even more liberal. She is a Democratic, uh, uh, she is a uh, Democrat activist out of Montebello. She has, uh, uh, she's a, a domestic violence attorney. Okay, next. Then office number 84, Javier uh, Perry, um, uh, Perez rather, uh, uh, is a supervising gang prosecutor, uh, department district attorney in West County, uh, West Covina since 1990. Uh, and he has a lot of uh, liberal and democratic support. He has a judicial activist rating of four. Susan Townsend, uh, is a department district attorney, a conservative. She, you know, she has a lot of conservative judges and moderate judges rec recommending her, and um, she has a five. So she's a little bit more conservative than Perez. Um, one of the, you know, judges are hard. They on purpose make it so they they don't let you know who they are. You know, oftentimes we say, well, where, where do you stand on homeschooling? Because homeschooling was outlawed by one of these LA County judges, you know, that was overthrown. Okay, sorry about that. What I said is that homeschooling was outlawed by an LA County judge, and then was overthrown. But, uh, uh, so I ask these judges, when I get them on the phone, I say, who's your favorite US Supreme Court judge? And if they say a conservative one, that kind of tells me where they stand. If they say a liberal one, that kind of tells me where they stand. Uh, Susan said Sandra Day O'Connor, uh -huh. which is kind of a liberal moderate judge. Next. All right, Office 158. Uh, David Ber Berger is a judicial activist, a uh, judicial index average of seven. That means he's more of a strict constructionist. Uh, on the phone with me, he promised me he would never legislate from the bench. Um, he is a violent criminal uh, prosecutor. He has poorly Republican conservative support. And he's running against Kim Nguyen. Nguyen. 
Thank you. <laughs> when uh, judicial index average of four, she's more of a judicial activist, and she is a de uh, Department of Attorney General since 2001, and she has Democratic and organized labor support. But okay, now we're going to get into the initiative. 17 confusing initiatives, and again, if you're not sure about when I'm going over these, go to the website. There could be much greater clarity on some of these. But I'm going to try to make these quick, easy for you to understand. And the first one, let's just talk about bonds for a second. Because there's a lot of misunderstanding of bonds. Many people think bonds are simply something you pass and, you know, it's free money. <laughs> bonds are not free money. For every dollar raised, another $2 must be paid back. So if you have a $10 million bond, you've got to pay back $20 million. Now, who do you pay it back to? Bankers and investors, and it comes out of the general fund. So instead of getting better roads, better ports, it's going to pay the interest of bonds. So it's not free money. And as interest rates go up, so do costs. And right now, we have a wall of debt in California. So huge and so incredible. So bonds are the most expensive way to fund a project next. Now the first one is Proposition 51. This is a $9 billion bond for statewide school construction. The poll says yes, 47%, no, 43%. Undecided is 10%. And as we take a look at this, those who are for it say a lot of the schools are, are in disrepair, a lot of the buildings are dilapidated, so we need to have another bond and all this money to be able to improve uh, these school facilities. Those against it say that we have this wall of debt, the bonds are too expensive, it should be done not by a state decision, but should be done on the local level because too many of these bonds, the money goes in the pockets of the construction industry, the architects and the builders, and not for the kids. So the supporters of this are the California Democratic Party, the construction industry, and the school districts throughout California. They've raised $8.3 million. The opponents, now here's the interesting. Republican and conservative groups have opposed this, with like the California Republican Assembly and uh, the, Cal uh, the California Republican Women's uh, Federated, but so does Jerry Brown. And the reason he's opposed to it, he says we can't afford more debt. Next. Proposition 52, two thirds legislative vote required to amend fees to hospitals. Now this is so bizarre. I'm gonna explain it to you, and if you don't understand it, it's because it's a little bit beyond understanding. <laughs> this will require a two-third legislative vote requirement to amend fees to hospitals. In other words, to amend the fees that the hospitals pay would take a vote of two-thirds of the legislature, which is basically saying they'll never be amended, right? So uh, it, 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 it's something that yeah. She's fixing it. Yeah. yeah. So, two thirds. Those for it say, oh, and why is there a fee on these hospitals? When Obamacare passed, it was determined that if the hospitals would pay this fee or this tax, that the hospitals would actually get more money than they're paying in the fee and tax. <laughs> so that, that, that's where it was. So, yes assures the tax on hospitals will continue because it will never be changed. No says the tax should be voted on on a regular basis, depending upon what happens to Obamacare, what happens to uh, all, all those issues. So voting yes says two thirds by the legislature. Voting no says keep it the way it is and let them keep voting whether to keep that fee or not. For this is America, the California Hospital Association, the California Democratic Party, the California Republican Party, $59.9 million for it.
Those against it have been the liberal groups of the SEIU, United Healthcare, and the conservative groups like California Republican Assembly. 11 million point five has gone against it. Next. Proposition 53. Now, remember we talked about bonds being expensive? Well, what has happened is that the state legislature will look for raising money and they'll create a bond themselves. It won't be voted on by the people, it's voted upon by the legislature. So we get all these revenue bonds that the legislature puts in. So those, uh, 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 some people put this on the ballot and require statewide voter approval for revenue bonds if it exceeds $2 billion. So any bond that exceeds $2 billion, you have to have a vote. Those for it say statewide bonds are expensive. I'm going to yell loud, okay? I'll say that. Well, they're, they're trying to fix it. Statewide bonds are expensive, wasteful to raise revenue, requiring statewide voter approval ensures that any bonds have the support of those who are paying them. Can you hear me? Yeah. I used to teach junior high, guys. <laughs> I've had to shout and yell for many years. So the no, bonds are a necessary measure to raise funds, so it should be easy for the legislature to pass a bond. So those for this, so that anything two billion above have to be voted on, California Republican Party, the Conservative California Republican Assembly, the California Federation of Republican Women, and the Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association say, vote yes. Now, they have raised $5.5 million. Those who are opposed to this, they, have, they are the California Democratic Party, the California Chamber of Commerce, League of California Cities, and State Building and Construction Trades, $1.4 million. Next. State legislative public recording transparent, transparency measure. Now here's the thing. I don't know if you guys know this or not, but the state of California is the most corrupt legislature in America. No. <laughs> I'm sorry. More legislators have been thrown into jail and charged with crimes in California than any other state in the nation. And one of the criminal, to me criminal, activities is that when you have a bill, you take that bill and you have the media look at it. You have debates by all the different parties debated. You go from one committee to the next. And then it goes to the assembly, and then it goes to the senate, and it goes to all these different places. And so then what happens is this. All that debate, all the media, it's voted upon. But they have in California a thing called gut and a man. Ten or twenty bills every single session with gut and a man. And what it is, it goes through all the hearings, and all the news media, and all the debates. It gets up to the very last day of voting, and they take out all the inside that was debated, and all the inside that the media saw, and put in a brand new bill, and with the, with the same number, and pass it. That's what they do. So, they put this on the ballot to try to it doesn't eliminate gut in a man, but it restricts it. So, well, let's go back. So the bill must, what it says is the bill must be printed, published on the internet at least 72 hours before a vote, except in cases of public emergency. Now the yes, those who are for it say, the best way to run legislation is let everybody see what a bill is and be able to debate it. Those against it say, no, sometimes you have to put in things quickly to get things done. 
So those for it are the California Republican Party, the California Federation of Republican Women, the California Taxpayers Association, most conservative groups, 7.9 million for it. Those against it are the California Labor Federation, the California Democratic Party, Democratic State Legislatures. So far, they haven't put in anything. <laughs> so, basically, um, uh, uh, this, the, this one is something where the legislature likes it easy, so they want to keep it. Next. 55, Proposition 30. If you remember back in 2012, we were in the part of the recession where the schools were really suffering and a lot of teachers were being laid off. Well, now that's kind of turned around. Record revenues have come in, a lot of funding for schools have come in. But at the same time, that bill that was passed in 2012 to help the schools, Proposition 30, is now ready to expire. Now, Proposition 30 was really controversial because what it was, it said that anybody earning over $200,000 a year would be paying about 13.5% in income tax. Well, that includes businesses, small businesses, who in, their income as a business is included, you know, not personally, but is taxed like that too. So what we've had is like 5.5 mil, uh, 5.5 businesses every week leaving California, and we've had companies not able to really expand. And a lot of the reasons they say is because of this highest tax in the nation. So those who are for the extension say we got to keep funding. Uh, the schools and help the kids. Those against it say, we've got enough revenue to do that without this. We've got to lower this in order to create jobs and not punish those who are uh, job creators. So the supporters for this to keep it, Service Employees International, California Teachers Association, Democratic Party, and School Board Association, they put in 46 million so far to support it. The opponents are California Republican Party, the California Chamber of Commerce, Howard Jarvis Taxpayers Association, National Federation of Independent Businesses. No money to, uh, to oppose it yet. 